Now I'd like us to consider situations in which the velocity is not constant, which means that the acceleration is non-zero. So we'll learn how to consider acceleration in our study of motion. In general, acceleration is the instantaneous slope of a velocity time graph. Conversely, the area under an acceleration time graph tells you the change in velocity. So let's look at this in the simplest case, which is when the acceleration is a constant non-zero value. A constant acceleration motion is also a situation that comes up fairly frequently, and we'll learn why that is when we study forces. Now if acceleration is constant, both velocity and position can change with time. So here our goal is to find the equations of motion for velocity and position under conditions of constant acceleration. The simplest case, of course, is when the acceleration is a constant zero, then that's just constant velocity motion. What that tells us is that the equations that we've derived already for constant velocity motion should show up as special cases of constant acceleration motion if you put a zero in for that constant acceleration value. Let's see how that works. Let's start with our constant acceleration. Here we stipulate that from time t0 to time t, the acceleration is some constant value. Here we're showing it being a positive value. We can use the acceleration time plot to find the change in velocity because the change in velocity is the area under the acceleration time plot. So here, this acceleration time graph, because it's constant acceleration, is just a rectangle. So the velocity change delta v is the height a times the width delta t. To find the velocity at any specific time, we need to start with the starting velocity v0 and add to it the change in velocity. So this gives us a segment of a straight line because the area of the rectangle increases in proportion to its length. It starts at v0, increases an amount delta v by the end of the interval. The formula for v as a function of time is v0 plus the area of the rectangle a delta t. The slope of that line is a, the acceleration. The area under the velocity time graph is then the distance traveled. This region is a trapezoid, so we'll need to find its area. One sensible way to do this is to break the trapezoid into a rectangle and a right triangle. The rectangle, shown here in dark green, is how far the object would move if its velocity were constant at its initial velocity, if the acceleration were zero. The right triangle is the contribution from the acceleration from the change in velocity. Because there are two shapes, there are two terms in the formula for delta v. The v naught delta t term is the area of the rectangle. The one half delta v delta t term is the area of this right triangle because it's half the area of the rectangle with a height delta v and a width delta t. Delta v is a delta t, so we can substitute that in. And then we see we have delta t twice in this term, so that's a square term. Our delta x formula has a linear term in delta t and a quadratic term in delta t. Now we're just about done. We have the formula for distance traveled, and it will be just a minor adjustment to find the formula for position at any time. So let's make the position time graph. This gives a parabola, because the formula, recall, is a quadratic in t. The final position is equal to the initial position x0 plus the distance traveled delta x. The initial slope of the parabola is v0, and at any instant, the instantaneous slope of the parabola is the object's velocity. The curve of the parabola results from acceleration. So to calculate position at any time, we simply add the initial position x0 to the formula that we have already gotten below for the distance traveled delta x. So now we can summarize the results of that derivation. The formula for change in velocity is a delta t. The formula for instantaneous velocity is the initial velocity v0 plus the velocity change 
delta v or a delta t. The formula for change in position has two terms, a linear and a quadratic. Recall that was the rectangle and the triangle parts of the trapezoid. The formula for instantaneous position has three terms, the constant term of initial position plus the linear and quadratic terms of the trapezoid in the velocity time graph. Now these four formulas are everything that we need to fully characterize constant acceleration motion.